if there's one thing that really gets my panties in a twist, if there's one thing that really pisses in my Cheerios, it's conserv well-funded conservative think tanks indoctrinating young impressionable children with conservative chuttery thanks to some comrades posting on uh, the beard tube subreddit I have stumbled across this little fucking can of worms the foundation for economic education what a cute little child friendly banner they have joined June 4th 2009 112,000 subscribers says fee focuses on introducing freedom as a life philosophy to newcomers in the youth audience striving to bring about a world in which the economic ethical and legal principles of a free society are familiar and credible to the rising generation well that sounds pretty good that sounds good I sure do like freedom I fucking love freedom I would love it if we were free from the oppression of capitalism if we were free from the class antagonisms that divide us if we were free from the uh, oppressive bourgeoisie who rule the society free from the oppression of the police the oppression of the government the oppression of global capitalism I sure wish we were free, ladies and gentlemen. I wish that we lived in a free society, and I sure do uh, want young people to yearn to live in a freer society. But I don't think I'm talking about the same kind of freedom that the foundation for economic education is talking about. In the same way that I don't think I'm talking about democracy in the same way that the National Endowment for Democracy talks about it. I think when the National Endowment for Democracy talks about democracy and when the FEE talks about freedom, they're talking about that good old American democracy, that good old American freedom that turns us all into wage slaves hooray and we live under the yoke of capitalism so this is their fucking website pretty well funded and put together definitely a grassroots organization ladies and gentlemen I'm sure that this wasn't funded by the Koch brothers or some right-wing think tank at all so it says FEE's mission is to inspire, educate, and connect future leaders with the economic, ethical, and legal principles of a free society. These principles include, alright, so here's what they mean when they talk about freedom. This is freedom, keep in mind. Individual liberty, free market economics, entrepreneurship, private property, high moral character, and limited government. Now I will go point by point and explain why each of those don't lead to freedom, all right? So let's start with individual liberty. First of all, that's a fucking buzzword. That can mean whatever you want it to be. I want the fr I want the individual to be free. Well, what kind of freedoms does an individual have under capitalism? They get to choose which uh, insurance company denies them health care coverage so that they can die on the street. They can choose which street to die on. Hey, that's cool. Uh, when they go bankrupt, they can choose which bank gets to come repossess their house. When they, uh, when they get their pink slip, they can choose whether or not they want to go stand in a bread line. It's, uh... You know, it's great. Individuals have so much fucking liberty in this society. They have so much fucking freedom. As, you know, as long as you have the money to pay for it. Uh, you got some freedoms here. We can talk about free market economics. Um, I went to school in a small town. Alright, there was a mom and pop run grocery store. 
it had been part of the town as as old as the town itself ladies and gentlemen it was a it was your local cute little grocery store and i saw over the years when the big walmart came to town everybody stopped going to the local grocery store because walmart offered more products at a lower price they simply could not be beat ladies and gents and the local mom and pop grocery store could not compete with walmart if they lowered their prices they wouldn't make a profit if they try it if they tried to uh if they tried to compete with walmart their business would suffer but at the same time they had to compete with walmart so this free market economics really doesn't lead to freedom because what ultimately wound up happening was that the local mom and pop store closed down and everybody was forced to go to Walmart what if you didn't want Walmart what if you didn't like Walmart what if you were like me and the thought of going to Walmart made you nauseous well it fucking sucks because they're the only grocery store in town and you need beans ladies and gentlemen I need beans uh, Danky needs his beans Danky needs his tendies uh, and I'm not gonna get tendies and beans uh, you know in the next town over that takes a long time to drive so fuck it I'm gonna go to Walmart I'm gonna uh, suck big capitals dick but hey that's freedom I sure do enjoy that freedom now entrepreneurship I mean that's just you creating something coming up with an idea and being able to make money off of that uh, first of all I mean they don't tell you but like 99.9% .9 of entrepreneurs don't fucking make it and the ones who do make it just go on to be a big bougie capitalist piece of shit so it's like are you really you really want to do that, huh? You really want to, like, become the next Mark Zuckerberg and just spy on everybody's privacy? Uh, become a fucking sociopath and exploit your fellow man for their labor while you just roll in the fucking dough? Like some kind of fucking, um, Scrooge, Mc Scrooge McDuck on, uh, acid? I mean, private property, that's like the opposite of freedom, all right? Private property is drawing a fence around the commons and saying, Hey, bitches, since I have money, and I have cops, and I have security that I can pay to enforce my will, this is my land now. This is my factory, my means of production, not yours, and so therefore I get to exploit the fucking shit out of you every single day for the rest of your life, work you like a pack mule until you die. That's private property ladies and gentlemen it's pillaging from the masses so you can concentrate all the wealth all the capital into uh, just a few key individuals it does nothing but reinforce the class antagonisms uh, inherent to capitalistic society and high moral character that's just fucking stupid what's moral to these people obviously is not moral to me these people think exploiting other people in a slave-like fashion is moral. I don't think that, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't think living under a system like that is moral. I don't think it's a moral system. And limited government. I mean, this is standard anarcho-capitalist bullshit, ladies and gents. They want the government shrunk down to the size of a pea. I was born and raised on this cockamamie bullshit all this is doing is giving complete and total power to private unaccountable individuals notice individual liberty private property limited government these all serve to reinforce the power structure of the bourgeoisie this is nothing but bourgeois reactionary propaganda and they are showing this shit to your kids 
Oh, but it gets better, folks. It gets fucking better. One, FEE will be the movement leader in knowing our customer. These people are so out of touch with the working class and with the young people. You can tell boomers wrote this because they honestly think ideas like free markets and private property are like appealing to young people. Newsflash, millennials are poor. We don't own yachts. We don't own summer houses. All right, we don't live in the Hamptons. All right, we're struggling. We're drowning in student debt, trying to contend in an oversaturated job market with housing prices that have risen sky fucking high while ra wages have remained stagnant since like the fucking 80s. So no, number two, FEE will be the leader in introducing freedom as a life philosophy. Once again, I say to you, their idea of freedom is a sham. Freedom for the bourgeoisie means subjugation and slavery for literally everybody else. So unless you're a bourgeois fat cat fuck, their, this organization's strategic objectives don't serve you. Instead, they serve to your detriment. FEE will be a leader in the leverage distribution of ideas on liberty. Well, who appointed you judge, jury, and fucking decider of all things uh, in the marketplace of ideas? I'm sorry, but that's decided by the people. Not by you and your coke-funded fucking masters. But here's the real joke, ladies and gentlemen. The foundation for economic education is a non-political. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're non-political in the same way that the National Endowment for Democracy is a non-governmental organization. Fucking hilarious. These guys think that we all have mush for brains. What, do you think I was born yesterday? You think I fell off the fucking turnip truck and hit my head when I was a kid? And I can't fucking comprehend a double standard when I see it? This is bullshit. You're feeding me bullshit. You're obviously political. Non-profit? Ha, <laughs> you're pro-capitalist. That means you're for-profit by definition, dumb bitch. Tax exempt? Of course, you gotta get that tax exemption. Uh... You know, <laughs> just hilarious. Uh, educational foundation and has been trusted by parents and teachers since 1946, since the Cold War, to captivate and propagandize tomorrow's leaders with sound economic principles and the entrepreneurial spirit with free online courses, top rated in-person <laughs> seminars, free books for classrooms, as well as relevant and worldly daily online content. I would love to get an in-person seminar with one of these fuckers and then just light their ass up about the free market and the labor theory of value and Marxism. That'd be fucking hilarious. FEE is governed by 13 trustees who oversee their mission, meet the professionals who dedicate their lives, internships, annual reports, uh, financial information, view FEE's finances. This is a March 2019. La 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 la. Alright. Jesus Christ. These guys are fucking rolling in the dough. Ladies and gentlemen. Their net assets without donor restrictions. $5,063,000. With donor restrictions. $2,528,000. For a total liability and net assets of eight million four hundred eighteen thousand four hundred eighty-five bucks, there's contributions. All right, without donor restrictions, twenty-five, uh, two million five hundred ninety thousand three hundred fifty dollars. Grants and contracts, royalties, 
investment income. These guys get two million five hundred ninety thousand dollars, a, a total of three million seven hundred eighty thousand six hundred forty six dollars in contributions. Oh, but I'm sure that was all just grassroots. Uh, you know, uh, little Jimmy down the road pitched in five bucks because he was so uh, impressed with the educational quality that he was getting from the FEE. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure teachers and people earning minimum wage and just young people, they're the ones donating to this. You know, they're the ones spending 3.7 million fucking dollars. Shit, man. This just keeps getting worse and worse the more I look. Alright. Are they going to disclose who their primary donors are? I don't know. Investments consist of common stocks, mutual funds, and a blah blah blah. Investments in marketable securities are recorded fair value based, blah 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 blah. Certain limited partnership investments have no readily determinable market value as estimated blah 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 blah. Estimated values, yada yada. Investments. Let's see their investments. I thought they were a fucking non profit. They said as much. They said in their statement they were a non profit. So what the fuck are they doing investing? Investments. Six million seven hundred thousand. Oh, I'm sure these guys aren't making any kind of profits off of this. I'm sure. I'm sure everybody's on the fucking up and up. I would be so fucking surprised if the Koch brothers had nothing to do with this. Alright. Net assets with donor restrictions were restricted for the following at March 31st. The Hesht Foundation. Alright. Uh, WSC Project. Eugene Thorpe Award. Western Mass Discussion. Warren Trust. Endowment. The Crogdale Trust. Warren Trust. Crogdale Trust. What is all this shit? Man, this is just fucking disgusting. So, these are the fucking board of trustees, alright? Got all these guys. Um, and then this is the staff. So, you know, these are some chuds that are on the payroll but anyway this is making me sick ladies and gents let's check out one of their videos because they they churn out some quality dank videos so I'm gonna mute the song and let's just go Thanos is still alive and everywhere what the fuck does this have uh why Jeff Bezos isn't as rich as you think. It ain't so busy being a green. Why canceling student loans is bad for everyone. Jesus, what is this? Like a fucking shittier version of Prager U? Are you kidding me? Is Captain Marvel actually a hero? Like, what is this topical shit? They're doing exactly what the YouTube chud community does. They find pop culture shit and they inject all their chud politics into it. Whether it's video games, comic books, Star Wars, anime, movies, TV, music. What's so bad about the Galactic Empire? I mean... Fuck me, dude. Let's just watch. Let's just watch this. Everyone familiar. And just. <sighs> I gotta prepare myself for the fucking stupidity, ladies and gentlemen. Player with Star Wars knows that the Empire is bad and the Rebellion is good. But. Why? 
It's because what makes life un it's because the empire were socialist, you guys. I'm sure that's literally what this video is gonna say. Under Emperor Palpatine, Shit, so unbearable. Man. And what would make life under the New Republic so much better for the ordinary citizens of the galaxy? The movies offer surprising. It's funny. Because, you know, I can look at Star Wars from, like, a Marxist point of view and see that, like, the Galactic Republic was just a fucking sham controlled by capitalism and they allowed a fascist fuck like Palpatine to rise to the point of power in the first place. So, if anything, Star Wars is an allegory on how Western bourgeois liberal capitalist democracy fucking fails. But, you know, that's just me being a fucking nerd. Only little information as to what's actually wrong with Imperial rule. Now, I'm not talking about blowing up planets or Anakin murdering Jedi children. Yeah, because that's like, you know, when the U.S. goes and bombs another country for imperialism, kills a bunch of kids, uh, supports a regime that drone strikes a bus full of children, as in the case of Yemen, uh, you know... When American imperialism does that, it's not too bad. I don't criticize that. Criticize this Star Wars imperialism instead, because that, that doesn't have real-world implications. You know, I don't have to, like, question my core beliefs if I'm just talking about Star Wars. I'm talking about the daily lives of ordinary citizens, people who don't have any connection to the Sith or the Jedi or the battle for the Senate or any of that stuff. I mean, sure, behind closed doors, Emperor Palpatine is secretly a Sith Lord who can shoot lightning bolts from his hands. That definitely seems evil, but according to the movies, nobody but a few Jedi even knows about it. He doesn't walk down the street electrocuting random peasants. For the most part, his brutality seems limited to confrontations with the Jedi and the Rebel Alliance. It's almost like fascists will just stay in disguise and disguise themselves as bourgeois Western liberal uh, Democrats long enough to get into power. And yeah, Darth Vader is one of the most intimidating villains of all time, and he's obviously a menace to rebellion soldiers and the Jedi, but... Let me just take a moment and talk about just how fucking cheap this video is. How... This has five, uh, 178,000 views, and they are using all of this fucking Star Wars footage just to, post, uh, just to push their right-wing chud agenda. Imagine that you're just some ordinary moisture farmer going about your business on Tatooine. Unless your name is Owen Lars, Darth Vader almost certainly doesn't care about you. And you might not have even heard of him. He's mainly interested in finding Luke Skywalker. Join me, and together we can rule the galaxy as father and son. better get to the point soon, man. I hate these fucking mealy-mouthed conservatives and how they don't just fucking spit it out. Just spit it out, you bitch. Just say that the Empire is a bunch of commies so I can, like, go on with my life and upload this video. So the question is, what would it mean to live in a galaxy ruled by the Empire? And why is it the ultimate depiction of tyranny in popular culture? The more I've thought about this, the more I've struggled to come up with an answer based on anything actually depicted in the films themselves. We have to look to the Soviet Part of the problem Union. is that in most Star Wars movies, the characters are all fighting in a single political struggle. And uh, apart from Padme's interminable dialogue about senatorial procedure in the prequels, there's almost no discussion of governing philosophy in the entire series. Ask yourself, what does the Rebel Alliance even stand for besides the destruction of the Empire? And what does the Empire stand for apart from maintaining power? Well, alright. This this is going to be fun because when I look at the Rebel Alliance, I see an alliance of a lot of different kinds of aliens. They have different backgrounds, different goals, different ambitions. You see somebody like Han Solo, who's basically like a thief and a rogue, uh, team up with somebody like Leia, who's a fucking bougie politician, team up with somebody like Luke, who's just some poor fucking country bubkin farm boy, uh, a huge diversity of uh, agendas all coming together to stand against the Empire, which is uniform, monolithic, monocultural, 
trying to extend its reach, uh, protect its power, intimidate, and control the entire galaxy. Not unlike the U.S. Empire trying to maintain its global capitalistic hegemony. Uh, you know, I am a nerd supreme, ladies and gentlemen. Don't fucking challenge me. Don't challenge me, especially if you're some Koch Brothers funded asshat chud. Don't fucking challenge me on my Star Wars lore, because I will fuck you up, dude. In A New Hope, Grand Moff Tarkin at least offers some insight into the Empire's operation. The regional governors now have direct control over their territories. Fear will keep the local systems in line. Fear of this battle station. But what policies does the Emperor want enforced across the galaxy? What is it that he's actually imposing on his citizens that requires multiple planet-destroying weapons? I mean, I get that Palpatine wanted power, but what's he actually do with it? Once he acquired political control over the galaxy, did he ban gay marriage? Droid marriage? Gay droid marriage? Did he ban books and restrict speech? Does Star Wars even have books? Did he nationalize or uh, galactic? Keep in mind that the right wing and conservatives on YouTube especially constantly criticize the left in injecting their politics into the narrative. And what is this channel doing but injecting their politics into fucking Star Wars? Ties major industries? For something that's so important to the story, Star Wars doesn't really even try to answer these questions. Here's what the Emperor did. He rounded up and he killed all of the entrepreneurs and he said, all right, there's no free markets anymore. I'm going to pass uh, government regulations and tax the rich. That's what uh, Palpatine did. But here's what we do know. First, he taxed the rich to pay for his Death Star. There's a lot of smuggling in the Star Wars universe, and that probably means that there are a lot of laws and regulations making various goods and services costly or illegal. Prohibiting or restricting trade creates black markets. It can also impoverish many people and make their lives much harder when they can't access the things that they want and need. Uh, the war on drugs, anybody? Um, I'm sure this isn't what he intended. I'm sure the route he's going to go down is like, because the emperor's restricting the free market, it's making everybody miserable. That's why there's all the smugglers. But like, you could use that exact, exact same fucking line of reasoning to argue why the drug war shouldn't exist. Even though it's the invisible fabric of everyone's daily life, commerce doesn't really seem to exist in the Star Wars universe at all. But one way the Emperor could... Except for the entire faction called the Trade Federation. Let's just have that sink in for a little bit. This is how stupid right-wingers are. Once again, do not fucking challenge me on my Star Wars knowledge. To be ruining people's lives is by controlling what gets bought, sold, or traded dictating prices or by taxing everything so much that even basic necessities become impossible to afford. Once again, like, none of this is supported by the lore of Star Wars. Like, there's nothing in the movies to suggest that Emperor Palpatine was raising taxes or anything like that. This is all just chud reactionary bullshit trying to sell you their chud politics. Trying to turn you into a little bourgeoisie, even though you'll probably never be one. Another thing we know is that the Imperial military uses its power against citizens of the Empire, and not just in terms of collateral damage. In Star Wars Rebels, stormtroopers and other Imperial agents are often seen conscripting innocent people into their armies. It's almost like in a capitalist system, when the police, like, are used to quell, uh, proletariat uprisings. And seizing their property without compensation. More recently, in Rogue One, we see a Star Destroyer hovering over a kyber crystal mine, and the Empire appears to force people to work in the mines in order to acquire key components of the Death Star. We might assume that the Imperial military gets ma Or maybe they just pay them such a shitty wage that it seems like they're forced to work there. 
because if they didn't work there, they would starve and die on the streets. You know, like the system of capitalism, where it forces everybody to be a fucking wage slave. Many or most of its supplies and resources through similar means. Stealing from people around the galaxy, taking their property by force. But that assumes some kind of property rights, and that's never fully established in that world. And there's one more terrible thing we know about the Empire from The Force Awakens. Like all of them, I was taken from a family I'll never know, and raised to do one thing. On my first battle, I made a choice. Keep in mind, this is the same right wing that in the United States separates children from their families and puts them in concentration camps. I wasn't going to kill for them, so I ran. That's a form of slavery that many real-world governments have used throughout history. Including the U.S. governments. Sadly, even the United States government still yep. has the power to draft its citizens into war. Though, that hasn't happened for decades. Unfortunately, Star Wars never actually wrestles with these issues in any meaningful way. It seems to assume that the major difference between a good galaxy and a bad one is the presence of democracy, but that's hardly a guarantee. Many democratic leaders have created misery for their citizens and even used democracy to amass power and become dictators themselves, just like Emperor Palpatine did. In order to ensure the Funny that they're using like right wingers to show that, like, on some level, are they aware? Are they fucking aware that they're the bad guys? I don't know, ladies and gentlemen. I think they're so stupid they don't even they're not even catching on. Watch this fucking video get uh fucking flagged by YouTube for copyright. Uh even though this video is using all of this stuff so this probably royalty dies. free by the way with thunderous applause great fucking video i think that works in the film because it's so true to what we actually see in uh, okay 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 they did the old switcheroo did you guys catch that did you guys catch that they did the switcheroo the right wing switcheroo they showed how people will abuse Western bourgeois liberal democracies to rise to power. They show a picture of Mussolini and a picture of Hitler. Now they're showing people riding on the streets. They intercut that footage with a picture of Nicolas Maduro. They have, uh, uh, and not so subtle of a way, connected Maduro to Hitler and Mussolini confusing the political spectrum to such an extent that these guys can't be called an educational anything. Economic education, how about you read what the flying fuck the political spectrum is before you make a video equating Maduro to Hitler, you dumb, cock-sucking pieces of shit. God, I hate this real life i'm tri i'm and triggered you triggered me now are you happy i'm gonna fucking turn to the dark side anger leads to hate hate leads to fear fear leads to suffering fuck fuck the right wing padme gets to the real issue here liberty liberty the only answer oh liberty oh liberty i'm gonna jizz all over because he said liberty that's my favorite fucking word to this question that actually makes sense is that the empire is an awful place to live because its people lack individual freedom citizens of the empire aren't secure in their possessions and property they can't go where they want without being stopped by imperial forces I think the bigger issue is that they have a giant fucking death laser that can destroy a whole planet pointed at them. Uh, I think the bigger issue is that they're stormtroopers with guns all over the place. I don't think it's because they're being taxed more, or uh, they don't <laughs> they, they don't have private health care insurance, they have to use a stupid public option, fucking the Imperial Standard uh, health care plan. That sucks. You know, it's these guys are just injecting all this right-wing Koch brothers boomer talking points into this. It's 
it doesn't exist, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing in the Star Wars universe to suggest that Palpatine was wanting to tax the rich and wanting to, I don't know, do a Green New Deal or anything like that. It's fucking absurd. It's it's lunacy. This is fucking lunacy. They can right be now. imprisoned or forced into an army without a trial or the opportunity to say no. And restrictions on trade and commerce make them poor and condemn them to getting what they need from dangerous black markets. Even though in episode one, the entire conflict between the Trade Federation and Naboo started off because Naboo wanted to tax the trade routes. So it's like, y the narrative doesn't support what the Foundation of Economic Education wants him to support. Star Wars isn't a fucking conservative pipe dream. All right, Star Wars isn't conservative propaganda. News flash for you. Star Wars isn't a very political thing to begin with, but if anything can be mutually agreed on about Star Wars and politics, it's that the Empire represents Nazi Germany. They represent fascists. They call their soldiers stormtroopers for fuck's sakes. Jesus Christ. It's really not that big of a fucking revelation. It doesn't take a genius to figure that out. But apparently the idiots at the Foundation of Economic Education are so stupid that they see Star Wars as being justification for capitalism. Fucking hilarious. Smugglers and gangsters. And if the rebellion stands against that, then they are true. This is the worst fucking hey everybody, video I've ever for wa seen. Watching Out of Frame. This is a new monthly series where I'm trying to talk about the intersection of art, culture, and big ideas from a perspective that hopefully is a little different. Let me know what you thought of Hopefully it's a little different. You know, one that's like funded, gets like $8 million of Koch Brothers money, and we just suck the dick of capitalism. You know, I'm gonna give the kids ideas that they've never heard about before like the fact that America is awesome, capitalism's awesome, the American version of democracy is awesome. I I don't think I think this is the first of many videos to come about this fucking channel because judging by all of this shit, common sense soapbox, they going to call this horse shit common sense? Uh I, I'm going to cover many more of these guys' videos in the future, but I'm going to warn you guys. I'm going to get pissed off, alright? This might make me suicidal. Are they- oh, Jesus Christ. Are they really going to co-opt Avatar The Last Airbender and use that to make chud propaganda? This makes me sick. This makes me sick. Avatar is my favorite fucking show. You better fucking not. Next episode, you best believe I'll be covering this motherfucker. And we're gonna see how they butcher my childhood. Alright. Everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. And by Fire Nation, I mean capitalism. Fucking sucks, dude. The, the foundation of economic education is the foundation of fuckery, ladies and gentlemen. The foundation of chuttery is what this is.